Welcome back to season two of Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. I am your host, Marcia Blaine, a licensed professional counselor, a clinical hypnotherapist, an author, motivator, and life coach. Join us during the season as we begin to normalize freedom. Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. I am your host, Marcia Blaine, a licensed professional counselor, an author, motivator, clinical hypnotherapist, and a life coach. But tonight, I operate in the role as podcast host of Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. I have the privilege of meeting with and bringing to you a beautiful soul. And y'all know, I take it seriously when I bring people on to Authentically Peculiar with Marcia because they have to be able to give you something that's going to change your life, cause you to own yourself and become your best self. So I'll introduce to you, Mr. Ambassadors Inspire to Inspire, Mr. Tracy, Thompson Ferris, yes, coming in from Chicago, Illinois, relocated here to Georgia. He is an Army veteran, married to his beautiful, lovely wife, Sylvia, for at least 25 continuous years. Yes, and the father of three children. He is the founder of Ambassadors Inspired to Inspire, a nonprofit organization that focuses on inspiring others through biblical standards, faith, family, relationships, marriages, reconciliation, and community service. He loves to go out into the church, changing the world, volunteering to support, teach them to lead, to love, I'm sorry, ministries, T3L, which is a community outreach ministry that focus on women that are affected by violence. Now that is so huge because when women know that men care enough to focus on what they are experiencing, it changes how they look at things because their perpetrator may have been a man. So building that trust back up, understanding that there are some good men that are gonna look out to support and protect them, that is huge. Wait a minute, this town middle school. Tell me about that. Well, relocating to Georgia. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to get everything to establish mm -hmm. myself. So uh, basically, I went to the schools and asked them to say, hey, no school is going to start up. They said, well, yeah, we, you know, we need some backpacks. Mm -hmm. You know, people always say, so I, within our community, mm -hmm. I have a little announcement. Hey, this is what I'm doing. Trying to get some backpacks. You don't mind donating uh, some items. Mm -hmm. And so, from the donations and what what my household bought, we weighed just like 50 bags. Awesome. 50 bags. That, that's so beautiful. And the reason why, when I saw Dutch Town, my daughter graduated uh, from Dutch Town High. She was the first full class that came to Dutch Town. She graduated in 2008. So my heart always is there. So the next time you do that, drive whatever, count me in. Okay. I'm, I'm there. Don't, don't leave me out. So as you can see, Mr. Ferris is a man of stature. He's a man of honor. He's a man of precedence. And you know what? Tonight, we're actually going to talk about relationship recovery and overcoming obstacles. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm going to blast you about your computer. <laughs> Mr. Ferris and I, I love, love, love this. He wanted to be so intentional, y'all, with responding. He literally took the time to look at the questions and said, how can I best help others listening to this? That is such an honor. That is such an honor that you didn't haphazardly take this, you know, kind of like, mm, it's just going to go. We're going to just shoot the breeze and see. Mm -hmm. But you were intentional about how lives could be changed. Welcome. And thank you for saying yes. Well, thank you for having me. You're yeah. so welcome. Yeah. It was an honor. What made you say yes? Let's start with that. <laughs> right off the bat. Off the bat. <laughs> um, just 
just that opportunity. Mm. It's an opportunity, not saying opportunity as far as saying this is me. Mm -hmm. But I believe that God allows people to be in place in positions at a point of time. Absolutely. As long as we are vessels willing to be used by him, mm -hmm. but it's but it's by his orchestration mm -hmm. to be used. Mm -hmm. So knowing that I've prayed and said, God, I want to be used by him. Mm -hmm. I know what I've come from. I know everybody has a past, right? No one is quick to clean. Mm -hmm. So when the opportunity came and I said, okay, all right, now whatever highway you're gonna do this, mm -hmm. whatever way you want, or what whatever you want to be said, okay. You know, it's so awesome when you know that you can literally have a conversation with the creator and you respond with guidance and the joy. For me, there's no better relationship. No better relationship than the one that you can have with God and be like, hey, here I am. What you want me to do? That's so awesome. Because it's, it's, a, it's definitely a position and a place or a mindset that is like, okay, we actually, you know, it's like, it's like growing up, mm -hmm. children, Mark, can I have, Pops, can I have this? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you hear the saying, the closed mouth is the empty stomach. Mm -hmm. So when we go to God and we're praying and we're making petitions, then he says, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to see where you are. Okay. I'm going to see where you are. Mm -hmm. And then when I give you that opportunity, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, and I'm guilty of it, we begin to operate in fear. Mm, talk about that for a minute. How is fear crippling? Fear is symbolic. Fear is symbolic of darkness, right? Oh, which is also symbolic of ignorance. Mm, so, it. so Satan is the prince of darkness. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so now he's here on earth, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Prince of darkness operating in ignorance. Mm -hmm. So now we have a fear of ignorance. Wow. So we don't operate in it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. We don't we don't move because we are fearful mm -hmm. of something mm -hmm. that we don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you get but when God illuminates mm -hmm. right something, He says, "No, I'm going to give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you have to learn how to apply. But first, you have to be willing mm -hmm. to apply mm -hmm. what it is. So fear is crippling because we are operating in ignorance of the unknown, which is in darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Somebody just got free. Somebody just got free from allowing fear to stop you. Because you don't have to. You get to control that. You get to let that go and let fear know you don't have a place here. That's powerful. <laughs> That's powerful. Excuse me. So let's jump into it. Now, that was a great thought. I don't even know if my question is going to be able to run it down. Uh, what did I just say about the TCL? That was a, that was a uh, clean text. Mm. We moved from Texas to Georgia. Okay. So, uh, a friend of mine, if I could pick up my last Absolutely. Shut him out. Out there. Her name is Lolita Gilmore. Mm -hmm. uh, she's T3 at Teaspoon of Love, and she had started a uh, woman's shelter. Mm. Uh, she worked with domestic violence, things of that nature. And so I, I would get to go and volunteer and just help out and do whatever. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But we had a friendship and uh, and they had let me use their facility because I was doing, I mean, I'm not licensed, right? Mm -hmm. But they let me use the facility to do uh, what we call men talk. Okay. So just invite men to come in and talk. Mm -hmm. And the community, regardless of the churches, things of that nature, just to be a platform for the mm -hmm. But in that relationship, um, uh, I got to be able to to help, mm -hmm. to volunteer, to go down and see the different things that women or people who've been abused, what they encounter. Mm -hmm. And then having them in the environment that has helped to rehab, wow. to get them back on their feet, mm -hmm. you know, helping them with jobs and the spiritual aspect as well. Mm -hmm. Because some places you go, they don't want to talk about spirit. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to say, hey, let's talk about God. Mm -hmm. It's like, check, you live here, check. Mm -hmm. And then you got this much time and you're out. Yeah. But she wasn't like that. It was it was really a ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like an unorthodox ministry that started. Yeah. So I think it's beautiful. So shout out to you, girl. Keep that hard work up. Lita Gilmore. Lita Gilmore. Keep that hard work up in Killeen, Texas. We need more people that really honor the community 
and what they want to bring to the table and helping others. Sometimes we forget we're all called to help. One way or the other, we're all called to help. So thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. So can you provide the audience? Since we're talking about relationship recovery and overcoming those ob obstacles, can you pro provide the audience with some insight into your knowledge about successful relationships? This one is very interesting. Mm. It's very interesting. Um, as you know, I was writing everything down and just trying to get my thoughts on paper. So if I can just, just kind of go over yeah. the notes here. So, and I'll say this interesting because it's, it's not about having a successful relationship, mm -hmm. but rather uh, we, how we biblically align mm -hmm. our self desire to his will and his purpose. Mm -hmm. How we interact with one another, both as single and as a couple, as a married couple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we look at successful and look at the definition of it, that means that there's a there's a goal. Mm. There's an end goal. Mm -hmm. So I'm successful when I made it to my end right. goal. Mm -hmm. I, had a, I had an aim, I had a purpose, and now here's an end. So if I say that I have a successful marriage, that means at what point is the end? Mm. That's so good. You know what I'm saying? That's so good. So I, so the thing about it is, so what I'm saying here is that um, when we when when that happens and we accomplish our aim and our purpose, right? Nothing more than a goal. Mm -hmm. and we stop because we have come to an end. We've achieved the purpose, whatever it may be for the individual. Mm -hmm. And then we say, oh, okay. So I don't say that we have a successful relationship, mm -hmm. but I would say that we have a committed marital relationship that continues to grow mm -hmm. and develop based upon our faith, mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. And our mutual commitment mm -hmm. to the relationship with God and to each other. Mm -hmm. So now we're we're committed to each other, not the thought. Right. So in relationships, in the same way, it's like being single. The question to ask: Am I married or am I in the relationship for the thought of it mm -hmm. or for the commitment? Of it? Right. And most people don't know, especially in this day and age with reality TV trying to tell people how to be in relationship mm -hmm. one of the things that i i often tell my clients when i talk to individuals who are having some marriage difficulties mm -hmm. first thing i tell them is or ask them is who taught you how to be in relationship yeah. most people have no examples of how to be in a relationship so they're just kind of going through it yeah. the next thing i i talk to them about is how who taught you how to communicate what your needs are how do you move? How do you do you even know you well enough to be in a relationship? Would you even be in a relationship with you? And more like the people are like, I don't know. They said mm -hmm. it's not that we have to understand that we have nothing more than an emotional and physical relationship or connection, mm -hmm. right? Uh, without a physical or legal, mm -hmm. right? Because some people may not look at it from a physical standpoint, mm -hmm. but it's, it's nothing more than legal binding commitment to each other right it's how do i put it it's faithfulness to each other it's subjective to our subjective subjective without consequence mm -hmm. i like that so this is what we're committed <laughs> to mm -hmm. we're committed to a thought mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that faithfulness is subjected to consequences or without consequences means that i can say that okay yeah we did yeah, let's talk about that one for a second. That word date. <laughs> Here's my definition that I've been telling clients. I have been saying to them definition that dating has a goal and a purpose. Mm -hmm. What y'all are doing is socializing. Yeah. Seeing different people going out on a quote unquote date to have dinner or whatever. But dating, and this is just, again, my definition, mm -hmm. that it has an intended purpose mm -hmm. of leading towards the commitment. Mm -hmm. What is your thoughts about that? Oh, that's one of your questions. Oh, is it? It is. It is. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, so I said, uh, first, got to consider what does each word mean, mm -hmm. right? So dating is the process of getting to know someone and may or may not lead you to a relationship. Mm -hmm. A form of romantic 
support shift, typically between two individuals with the aim of assessing the other uh, suitability as mm -hmm. a partner, mm -hmm. right? Depending on the translation, partner could be married, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, a spouse, an intimate relationship, or, or as a spouse. I like the fact that you said it's an aim to assess mm -hmm. if we can even buy. Yeah, because nice. it's, it's hard to do that. It's the socialization portion of that is that now we just, we don't have an end goal. Mm -hmm. we just, we're just out, you know, mm -hmm. as they say, kicking it, we're mm -hmm. enjoying it. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no uh, intimate. Mm -hmm portion that there's an intimacy but not an intimate. Mm, speak on that. So what's the difference between intimate and intimacy? You when we sit and talk, right? Mm -hmm. And we're sharing things about each other, mm -hmm. socializing, mm -hmm. I'm allowing uh us or our interaction to be intimate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the intimacy to right. me is now we cross mm -hmm. the barriers and now we have a physical uh interaction, a physical intimacy mm -hmm. with one another. We're sharing the most intimate parts that that we now have said no one else can see. Right. I've yeah. opened myself up to, to be vulnerable to you physically. You see my physical imperfections. And when you see my physical imperfections, you accept me. So now mentally, I feel that now mm. you've accepted me. That's good. And then I was writing, and I said, now, when we begin to flip-flop mm -hmm. or overlap mm -hmm. dating mm -hmm. and socialization, we have what I call, excuse me, uh, dating ownership status. Mm. Because mm. now I see you mm -hmm. as someone I'm dating because I saw something in you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I like, but as there's a void. Mm. So you're fulfilling a void within me. And so me not realizing that, hey, we're just socializing. But now that you, I see something in you, you're filling the void. Mm -hmm. And I subconsciously now put you in a place that I'm dating you ownership oh that's good and when i see you with someone else now i'm jealous but i don't understand within myself mm -hmm. that what i what i was really searching for mm -hmm. i have to a person has to decide within themselves what why am i engaging yeah in with this person mm -hmm. do i want to date and if dating what is the end goal of dating with we're out here uh and i say i mean i've been out there people out there mm -hmm. We're testing things mm -hmm. to see if it's oh this is it, right? Is this it? But you don't you don't have a goal. You say oh I don't want to get married. Then why are you dating oh. if you are married, expecting the benefit and faithfulness of a marriage, but you don't want to get married? So now you have a dating ownership status mentality. Whoa, I'm a, I'm a piggyback off of that. I want you to talk to young, old, and different. Mm -hmm. When you are operating in a role as if you are a spouse, but you've not actually been deemed worthy to be the spouse, mm -hmm. I think you're giving your gifts away mm -hmm. and you're going to end up with more disappointment because now you're giving up something that hadn't been earned with that thought of, this may keep them around longer. What are your thoughts about that? We said we're giving up for ourselves. We're giving up. So it's like um, people that's dating, all of a sudden, you know, the term wifey, they, mm -hmm. and all of that comes into play. And it's like you want wife type behaviors, but you don't want a commitment. That's basically like saying both sides want the traditional husband and wife. But they don't want to live the traditional way of sex. Mm -hmm. I want, I want the, the wife that's going to cook, clean, and be home, but she don't want to work as a man. Mm. Oh. You want the man that's going to provide and be there, but you're not going to clean, clean and, and raise the children in that traditional way. The traditional way is also saying that we hold ourselves in the celibacy, right? But no, we, we don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I want to test this out to make sure mm -hmm. that this is what I want over mm -hmm. here. But what we end up doing is living in a in a mentality of comparison. Yeah. And the other person is now trying to fulfill a a, 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 a once again a void mm -hmm. or act of comparison that they have no idea about. Right. Because you have tainted mm. 
your gifts, yourself, mm -hmm. somebody else. Mm -hmm. And now all of those things, those experiences that you've had with someone else is in your mind and you're laying with that person, mm -hmm. hoping that feel will feel will fulfill the acts that Joe did mm -hmm. or Jane will mm -hmm. do the things that Mary did. Mm -hmm. And when neither party does that, now we say you're not the one. Mm -hmm. Because now we base the one up on a comparison of dysfunctional relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That it, it, we eliminated the one mm -hmm. based upon dysfunctional relationship experiences. Yeah. Wow. So we, we're spreading ourselves around thinking, right? The young folks said, I got these bodies. And yeah. thinking that, yeah, I, 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 I got experience. But experience doesn't necessarily equate to quality. Right. And, and you know, what's so funny about that is, is, <laughs> excuse me, I tell young and old people, mm -hmm. when you have body count, all you do is absorb energy. Mm -hmm. You're taking off other people's energy. Mm -hmm. You're taking on the energy of those that they've been messing with mm -hmm. and the energy of those. So now you got 15 different levels of energy that you're taking on and you're trying to figure out mm -hmm. what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. When you add those body counts up, literally, you're putting yourself in a mental health crisis. I, I, if I change the word, mm -hmm. if I say instead of energy, I say soul time. Mm -hmm. That, yeah. So now I'm taking mm -hmm. a piece of this person and I've made them a part of me. And and I'm and the simplest way of saying, you've been around someone and and you hear how they talk. Mm -hmm. And they may say, oh, what's my call? What's my call? Oh, what's my call? They say it, and you've been around them so much. When you're not around them, you talk to somebody, you say, what's your call? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy, you don't realize that you're doing it. The same way, in a, to me, spiritually, mm -hmm. when we begin to have sex with people, and we're laying with them, and we're, we're sexting, we're doing all type of things, we're giving them a part of us, mm -hmm. and we're taking a part of them. Mm -hmm. And then we're with somebody else. Now we have, a, a once again, a dysfunctional mess. Right. And now you're trying to decipher between everything that what you've had to do with this person here, mm -hmm. but you can't mm -hmm. because you, unless you recognize what you're doing mm -hmm. and what you have done, now you can't renounce those things. Right. Because now you're sitting there and you're going, hey, why do I want strawberries? Because feeling married like strawberries. Mm -hmm. Woo, you better say that. And you're expecting Joe. And, and what I said up first, Emily, whatever they were, mm -hmm. you're expecting Joe and Emily now to like strawberries. Mm -hmm. That's not them. Exactly. But in within you, that's what you took a part of. Mm -hmm. So when we're out here spreading ourselves thin, doing these types of things, we're we're inviting different spirits and everything that's associated with them. Mm -hmm. We're inviting those things into ourselves where then it's outside of the will of God. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I, I've questioned this so many times in my mind mm -hmm. that. You're in the marriage bed. Mm -hmm. And if people can do whatever they may do mm -hmm. in the bed, as long as it's not outside the word of God, right. and you don't get a cease. But now when you lay with other mm -hmm. people and do the same thing, all of a sudden, now I, you, you have the possibility mm -hmm. of the STI, STD. Mm -hmm. Now I could be completely wrong. Mm -hmm. But I think that I don't know, when I look at it, I go, wait a minute. Okay, God. You said the marriage bed is undefiled. Mm -hmm. So to be undefiled means that there's no sickness mm -hmm. or no disease. Mm -hmm. Because in my intercourse, I'm mm -hmm. just sharing with the other person. Mm -hmm. I'm covered under you because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm aligning myself with your will and your purpose. Mm -hmm. But when I step out of that, right, to fornicate, or shall I say to Pervert mm -hmm. is where we get perversion. Mm -hmm. It is to act outside of what is right. Right now, we introduce our body, our mind, our will, our emotion. We introduce our bodies to things that wasn't meant to be there. Right, right, right. And how does that usually manifest? The body manifests itself to a sickness. Mm -hmm. Spiritual things manifest it too. Now we say, "Oh man, I don't know what I'm thinking." The main anxiety, the depression, and people don't realize right. that, that when we don't honor our physical, we're definitely dishonoring our spiritual. Mm -hmm. And so we had that disconnect 
that will occur in your life. Well, what's wrong with me? Well, let's backtrack. Let's see what's been going on. Where and what I I do is is tell people I need you to look at what seeds you planted, and then the weeds that's coming up with the with the seed because somewhere something's being choked, and you have to identify what that choking is. You mm -hmm. got to identify, and you and you can't just mow the weeds down. You literally got to pull them up by the root. Yeah. Go through a. I call it a physical and spiritual detox. Mm -hmm. Part of that is fasting. Mm -hmm. Part of that is accountability for your actions and your assessment. Mm -hmm. The other part is changing directions on your behaviors mm -hmm. in order for you to detox on all of this stuff and then making the commitment to I'm not returning to that type of lifestyle. It's repentance. Mm -hmm. It's another, it's another explanation of repentance mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to do it one eight mm -hmm. right slowly but as we're doing that 180 from a spiritual standpoint mm -hmm. we're we're acknowledging spiritually that okay god is disconnected from you mm -hmm. so it's the salvation is assessing mm -hmm. but now the process of sanctification is in itself a process mm -hmm. that process requires us even in relationships to acknowledge mm -hmm. the things that we feel that that we have a void. Yeah. That we have a void in. And most of the time when I talk to people, we are searching for love. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we want some form of love. Mm -hmm. And underneath that love, we mm -hmm. want affection, security, mm -hmm. and attention. And being heard and understood. Yeah. And all of that falls. Mm -hmm. Under that. Mm -hmm. So we look at that. I want affection, security, and attention. Mm -hmm. I want you to be able to talk to me. Mm -hmm. I want to know that we have a problem. Mm -hmm. So all of these things that when we're looking at what we want, it falls under what I really want to be loved. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how <clears throat> to express mm -hmm. the needs of my love. Mm -hmm. So now I'm expecting you who know not about my need to fulfill a need that I can't explain, but I'm mad at you because you couldn't do it. So now I leave you to go with someone else, but then fulfill the void that I don't know about. Or I, I mean, what I mean is don't know about, mm -hmm. meaning that I don't understand me. Period. <laughs> Excuse me, period. I don't understand me. Because how can you, and someone jumped on one of my social media pages and said, well, I just don't agree with that statement. And my statement was, how can you expect someone to give you something that you haven't given yourself? You haven't taken the time to get to know you. You don't even know you. We may not know the, the total intimate portions of us, right? Mm -hmm. Because God only knows the every every hair mm -hmm. on it. He knows the total part of us. We have a a glimpse of things of who we are mm -hmm. based upon experiences, information, mm -hmm. environment, geographical location. We have all of these things that begin to make up who we are. Mm -hmm. But when we're not honest, I tell people, I tell people a lot of times say, in order for you to be straight, you have to be honest with God about you. Mm. And I would tell him so many times, I said, I don't care if you have to study the mirror naked. I don't care. Whatever it is, get to yourself. Put your phone down. Yep. Close the door. Take mm -hmm. anything that looks like a weapon or mm -hmm. whatever case. Mm -hmm. Get it out of the room. Mm -hmm. Stand in the mirror and talk to God to talk to yourself. And, and you know what? That's so funny because I have a client that was struggling with self-love and his assignment was I need you to get naked and stand in the mirror I need you to take off all the restraints mm -hmm. any restrictions I need you to see you and he emailed me the result and he was like this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life that's it isn't it hard mm -hmm. I can see your flaws you see your physical flaws mm -hmm. I'll get in the mirror with you we don't say I look good right right you know, Oh, man, that's a little pressure. Mm, exactly. And, and we get in the mirror, and most people don't realize this. We never look at us. We see our reflection. And we look for the imperfections. And receive them. We call them out. Yeah. Instead of being able to say, I'm so cool with you, wherever you are in this moment, I'm laughing because remember that day we I posted a picture in the DMs at work. And said, This is what 55 looks like. And mm -hmm. you said, 
Yo, since that's the filter, I was like, nah, bro, it's 55. <laughs> this is 55. And I started laughing because I realized that we are in such an environment that people will filter themselves and they don't even know what they look like, but they're filtering their inner self mm -hmm. and they have no clue. And, but they're saying, I need a hero. Somebody come love me. Somebody rescue me. And the other person is saying, I don't even know you well enough to rescue you. Yeah, because you don't know what you are. We look in the mirror and we look for imperfection. Mm -hmm. mm. Look for imperfection. Mm -hmm. We put clothes on and we look in the mirror and we go, I'm looking mm -hmm. for something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so now we train our mind to look for something out there for ourselves. And then we look at someone else. The first thing that we do is look at an imperfection of them. And, but expect them to compliment us after we have actually looked at our own imperfection or what we deemed mm -hmm. imperfect. Yep. I have so many women that are in counseling who struggle with seeing them, their true selves. Because I'm, I'm one of those bold counselors. I'm coming here next session with all that on. Take it off. Yeah. I need to see who you are. I see a man go. But then it's so rewarding and free for them yeah. to recognize the actual beauty that they're hiding within themselves yeah. is being covered because society said this is the only way to see itself. Yeah, it, it, both men and women are facing mm. that type of identity yeah. um, insecurity. Mm -hmm. You can have self-confidence, mm -hmm. but be low on self-esteem. Say that again. You can have self confidence, mm -hmm. be high in self confidence, mm -hmm. but be low in self esteem. So, explain to the audience what you feel is the difference between self confidence and self esteem because some people didn't believe there was one in the same. Yeah, no. I'm confident that I can walk out that door mm -hmm. with my car getting in. I'm confident that I can, I can, I can type a paper, but um, my self esteem is like, oh, this is what it's good enough. Mm -hmm. Good. You know, I, I'm confident that I can go get her. But she's like, I'm confident I, I can get her. I don't know. Mm. That's it. Okay. You have the confidence to move, but you don't have the esteem to keep it. Mm. It's like having your character that match that position. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, God has placed you in a, in a place that I said, I'm going to put you right here, and I know that you're confident to do it, but your self esteem. Because you're acting as if they owe you to build your esteem. Yeah. 
it's more than a dollar. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you take that big dollar. And so even what about myself, mm-hmm. it means that about me that certain areas is like, oh yeah. some of the power that you gave yourself to actually be truthful in the moment this is how this works Mm -hmm. right all of us are still evolving and growing in this process i am one to believe that in order for you and now i'm going to have to change my terminology from successful relationship Mm -hmm. to a space of continued involvement Mm -hmm. in order to do that it has to start within you when you're evolving, when you are honoring you, that leads toward goalpost move. Yeah. Right? I tell clients all the time, and tell me your thoughts on this, and I know it's not one of the questions, but one of the things I tell clients is we change every decade, every 10 years. Our, our age changed, mm-hmm. we grew, our bodies changed the whole nine yards. I'm a firm believer that every 10 years, you need to go back to the original commitment. Mm-hmm. You need to look at it. You need to identify, are we still on track? Are we moving in this process together? How can we continue? Like what you said about, I don't call it a successful relationship. I call it a continuous growth. Yeah. That's my thoughts about giving clients. Mm-hmm. I have clients now, I've been married 23 years, 24 years, somewhere in there. And they came to me about, you know, just the disconnect. And I said, tell me how you met. Mm-hmm. Smiles, the memories, and they're listening to each other describe these moments. And it's like, I forgot. That's why it's so important to go back to the commitment and understand where you are. What are your thoughts about that? Well, look it up. Well, it's like this. Uh, but I, but I think like I said it before, most of my things that I come from come from a biblical perspective. Mm-hmm. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. We have we have to default back to the natural. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. We have to default. Mm-hmm. When God gives instruction mm-hmm. and then just got carried him out, and then we get to the place of like, I don't know what to do. What do we do at that point? Mm-hmm. Go back to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you're putting stuff in the devil, you get to a point, oh, I got that together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, that's good. And then now you get to a point of stuff. Mm-hmm. What is it? Right. Go back to the land. Oh, that's good. So, in order to move forward, you got to go back to the land. Mm-hmm. The man will give you the instruction in order to go. And most marriages have uh, an issue mm-hmm. because we don't reflect back to a child. Yeah. We don't reflect back to the one. Allow us to, to come together, and and when I am doing uh, it's instructions, a period. When when I'm officiating uh, weddings, mm-hmm. uh, first I got to go through marriage hell. Just we not get ready to play this game. Right. You you're going to be well equipped to walk through uh, this door mm-hmm. of commitment, um, and know that it's going to be some challenges because the way I just describe it is. Two individuals that live absolutely different lives coming together and trying to become one mm-hmm. in the process of unifying who they are. Right. But I always remind them, you can't forget the source. Well, you can't forget the beginning. You can't forget the commitment. Me and my wife have been, I said, 25 years. Mm-hmm. Right? And we've had some ups and downs mm-hmm. and rain games. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it hasn't been. Mm-hmm. Like that pretend stuff that they show. Yeah. Right. No, it, it, I've been there. Mm-hmm. The thing that my wife said to someone else or someone told her, you have to see the God in the person. And if you don't, then what you say? So, and then you have, again, goes back to what we said earlier. What are you committed to? Mm-hmm. Are you committed to the thought of marriage? Mm-hmm. Or you committed to the marriage. 
to each other. Right. Yeah. And now we enter into marriages mm -hmm. and we're going, oh, I'm so happy we can live with that. Exactly. But we don't want to deal with the ups and downs. So, one, my opinion would be this when we are facing the thing that's like going through the cycle, mm -hmm. right? We have to recycle that mm -hmm. to where God first began mm -hmm. in our lives, in our marriage. We have to cycle back mm -hmm. to that to go. It says there's nothing new under the sun of God, right? Like right. everything recycles in itself. Mm -hmm. But if you never get back to the point of origin, then you can't go anywhere else. That's it. You, you, you're not going to go anywhere. If I close this laptop and I shut it down, I have to go back to the point of power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. I have to go back to the point of power. Mm -hmm. If I open it up and I don't go to power, mm -hmm. then I'll just have a laptop that's open. And thus, marriages, they don't go back to the point of power. Mm -hmm. So now they just have a marriage. Wow. Everybody just in the same Y'all wedding was good. It was so nice. Girl, you was beautiful. Man, y'all can't stand each other. No problem. Yeah, yeah. No problem. When, when, when they would did their, uh, the, what do you call it? The torches, mm -hmm. right? They would dip to the oil. Mm -hmm. So the oil would make some fire. Mm -hmm. So but now when the oil begins to burn out, because after a while it's going to burn out, what do they have to do? We do. We dip mm -hmm. to the oil. Mm -hmm. Or being what now was saturated, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit saturated. Mm -hmm. You can't go back and take it saturated. Right. Without right. the saturation of the fire. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's simple. Mm -hmm. It's simple. And I'm going to try to sound like, oh, but if, if you don't go back to the point of saturation, you can't continue the fire. Well, the truth is, we as humans make this process more complex than it has to be. Most definitely. And part of that is, is recognizing, and I know this is my next question, your level of emotional fidelity. Oh, well, I like that question. I got a long answer to that. But if, <laughs> that so how important is it for you to be emotionally available in a relationship? Oh, okay. I'm definitely, can I, can I read this? You absolutely, and I'm all in a row. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> this is fine. It says, so like you said, feed the question, how important is it to be emotionally available before in a relationship? To be emotionally available means to be present and available. Mm. To be present and available in a person's life is developing memories together, sharing life experiences, having those discussions that may be good, bad, or indifferent, but meaningful, right? Mm -hmm. Establishing boundaries, to allow each person to be sincere with one another. Sincere, some people say, oh, you need to be honest. But if I'm honest with you, I'm always going to withhold something. Mm -hmm. Everybody withholds something mm -hmm. about themselves mm -hmm. that you don't want everybody to know about, mm -hmm. even the one that you're married to. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. between you and God. Mm -hmm. Go to the grave. Take to the grave. So I would rather for you to be sincere to me mm -hmm. and not me live under the false expectation. You ain't honest with me. Mm -hmm. But you don't tell anybody what to say. Okay. So, and that's to me, that's reality. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it is important for each of us to be aware of who we are that we talked mm -hmm. about as individuals, establishing standards within ourselves, respecting our own emotional availability to understand our capabilities or limitations. Mm -hmm. We cannot expect someone else to fill a void within us that they know nothing about. We spoke about that mm -hmm. earlier. It is not their responsibility to fulfill us, mm -hmm. then be upset and frustrated with them because they didn't fulfill us the way we thought they should. Mm -hmm. It's it's not their responsibility. The last two sentences is, one must understand to be emotionally available is a choice, not an obligation. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, if we're practicing being present and available in the courtship, then more than likely we'll be emotionally available, present and available, in the course of a matrimony. That's beautiful. I couldn't have, I don't even have a comment <laughs> or an additional question because it explained it so very well. And that is, it's a choice. Not an obligation. 
And it's not it's obligated. It's not a demanded mm -hmm. obligation. Mm -hmm. You're obligated mm -hmm. to be available. You're to obligated to make me happy. No, I'm not. Exactly. No, I'm not. no one else, and I, I need the audience to really hear this piece. No one is required to make you happy. They may extend the happiness that's inside of you if they felt it. But they're not required to make you happy. If you're walking into a relationship and you're emotionally unavailable, you're going to get what you're giving. That's the energy that you're putting out there. They may try, but the truth is, if someone is emotionally available and you aren't, you're going to push them away because they're going to get tired of trying to pull you up to that place. What I would say is honor yourself and do the work. Four, oh, okay. Go ahead. I'm stepping. I'm stepping in there. I'm stepping in. You just keep it far in. Yeah. I think that's the thing. To be present and available is is no different than how we interact with children. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mothers and fathers have to be present and available. A lot of times we're present but not available. Say that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we're available and not present. Mm -hmm. So now here I am in a relationship. I'm available, but I ain't present. Mm -hmm. If I had checked out. Mm -hmm. Physically here, but my mind is over there. Yes. Or, or, or I'm present, but I'm not available. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't come here. No, no, I'm going to stay up here. I'm here. Yeah, yeah, you going to do this? No, no. Or are doing this? No. Yep. I'm sitting next to you, but this is what I'm doing. These right here? Give me guys. Yeah. That's all they are. I'll tell people, and, and some of my clients. As we make them to be, when I hear clients, men and women, say, I wish they would not be on the phone so much. Let's set some boundaries and expectations. All phones down by a certain time at night. Period. You know what else? Mm -hmm. Inside the house, inside our house, baby, we are practicing one of those things. Mm -hmm. And it's sitting, something that we don't see mm -hmm. or hear about anymore. Sitting at the table. Yes. Sitting at the table. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have a dinner table, okay, that's fine. But sitting together, mm -hmm. put the phones down, eat mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. sit. There's so many conversations that happen when you're sitting mm -hmm. and you're talking and you're engaging. You know, it may seem a little uncomfortable at first, but once you begin to sit, you get to hear each other's emotions. Mm -hmm. Their thoughts, their desires, what do they want to do? It's all at the table. It's all sitting down. Because you're intentional with being present and available. And amazing. So now you, you check the block, mm -hmm. per se, of the emotional fulfillment for your family. Mm -hmm. But not only that, we as humans strive on being heard. Yeah. When we can come together, without distractions, we feel heard. That empowers us to continue to go on, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so having that empowerment will change lives. I'm gonna add something to that. One of the things that I've been telling my clients whether they're single or, or married or have a partner or whatever, your bedroom is your sanctuary. All of that other stuff that's going on in your life, before you cross that threshold every night, dump. Whether it's going outside to dump, whether it's writing it down to journal or whatever, when you cross the threshold into the sanctuary, it's about either if you're single, it's about you. If you're in a marriage, it's about you all. That is an opportunity to come together, mm -hmm. communicate, Discuss what's going on. Hopefully, pray. Share some statements of gratitude and appreciation, and then rest well. That pillow talk is amazing. Mm -hmm. But we lose the pillow talk. We lose the pillow talk in our frustration. I think we lose the pillow talk also with TVs and phones in our bedrooms. Yeah, before you even hit the bed, mm -hmm. it used to feel. You think about it that you lay in the bed and just sit there and you would talk. Now, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. Go on and say it. Talk to you. Go to sleep. 
No, no, not that ass. Uh, I used to tell couples, mm -hmm. right? If you want your spouse to hear something, talk to them about sex. Yes. Wide open. Yep. Both. Wide open. Both. If both people are clean, now, now, let's go ahead and put a little addendum to this. If both people aren't pleased and one partner has to get up out of frustration because you didn't care to mentally and physically honor you both in your sexual interaction, you miss the opportunity to talk. Because somebody is going to be like, why are you talking to me? You didn't care if I was okay. Yeah. You, you didn't, whether you could have met the fulfillment, you didn't care. Right. You didn't show that you care. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's definitely important. At least acknowledge, damn, I'm sorry. Right. Man, baby, you know, I was, I, listen, the kids got on my nerves today. Yeah. And, and I know that I kind of was halfway there. I got you on the next go round. Yeah, because see, if I, if I got bills, I'm not that type of man. I'm not geared that way. Like, well, you know, we ain't got no money in school. But that's what I said. Oh, right. I right, that man. Right, I'm right. Like, I ain't got no food, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And, and, and so on both sides of that spectrum, there has to be levels of understanding. Mm -hmm. One, you have to avoid the thought of you're being rejected. Oh, by yeah. your spouse. That's comparison. <laughs> well, excuse me. Is it comparison or is it I've had an issue with being rejected? And so when you say no mm -hmm. in this moment, I'm going, and this rejection could have started as young as a little girl mm -hmm. or a little boy whose family said, go on somewhere. Mm -hmm. that's still rejection mm -hmm. and so the moment that you say no mm -hmm. the mind goes back to rejection because what am I comparing you to well you know what that's a valid point I'm comparing you to what my experience was in the beginning I was thinking about comparison from relationship to relationship but that is a relationship it is right and so when you bring that comparison in you have to read the room Right, you got to read the room. Every, you know, one of the things that I've learned as we've gotten older is you have to know that your body gonna go through some metamorphosis. When you hit fifty, I don't know where y'all at, but when you hit about 45, 50, your body start doing some things that nobody really warned you about. You have to take those things into consideration. Yes, when you're talking about those intimacy moments. Mm -hmm. You have to have a level of understanding, but that's again a part of that goalpost moving. Mm -hmm. We're we're going through this process together with the intent of being present for each other, understanding the needs, understanding the importance of relationship, and then moving. Exactly. So, and it's in those moments in the first time after the intimacy that we allow each other to. Grow. Mm -hmm. Grow mm -hmm. through a situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I think of go and how things have been explained this over time, when I think of go, if I say, if you tell me, Tracy, go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? That means I'm going to go there, mm -hmm. but I'm going to come back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you just told me to go. Mm -hmm. But when I grow mm -hmm. through something, that means I made it past. The, the look and the name mm -hmm. of the face and the thing mm -hmm. and I grow past that. This, you know, it's it's artificial. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if it was real, this uh what do you call it? Petal mm -hmm. would never grow to that root. Right. Now it's grown. Mm -hmm. But if it's going, mm -hmm. then I put it down to go. Put it back to school. Mm -hmm. And it's always gonna keep going. Mm -hmm. It's gonna keep going. Mm -hmm. It's gonna yeah. keep going. That's so a great analogy. Just in it for yourself, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? It was both and entered into that moment 
and they pad and everything is done, we have a tendency to lay. Yeah. We have and bask in that moment. Yep. Right? Because all of the neurological systems are lowered so that we can be present. My defense is down. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. Mm -hmm. Don't go into the conversation with an argument. Or don't come, don't come at it as, well, why didn't you do this? Now that we got this over, why you ain't pick them clothes up? And why you thing you go right mm -hmm. back up so quick? And then the next time it's time for intimacy, success. It's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same because the subconscious has now recorded that you took a beautiful moment and switched the gears. So now, now back mm -hmm. to the rejection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now I feel rejected. It may not have been you rejected me prior to sex wise, but now you rejected me mentally. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to reject you. Mm -hmm. Physically, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be with you, right? But I'm really not gonna be with you, right? But I'm gonna be. Should I say I'm, I'm rejecting you mentally? Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. gonna be there, mm -hmm. but even in the physical, I'm not 100. I'm there. not with you. I'm not. I'm not 100. Mm -hmm. I'm just going. I'm just going mm -hmm. through the motion. That's good. That's good. I'm just going mm -hmm. through the motion. But when you have a relationship and you're both developing and learning. From the thing with the highs and lows. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, hey, the first thing, yeah. But with the highs and lows, when you grow mm -hmm. into the situation, now the intimacy is different. Yeah. It's like makeup sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You grew through the situation. Mm -hmm. Oh, baby, I love you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for understanding. Mm -hmm. And all that. So mm -hmm. now we, we interact with each other differently. So now I got a conscious message. You cared enough to figure out what was going on and came to give me a listening ear. Exactly. When we're growing on both ends. That's powerful. It, it is, isn't it? Powerful. Yeah, but it took a long time to understand that. Well, because <laughs> our, our truth, <laughs> no one was having those conversations with us. And it goes back to what we said earlier. When we learn to be honest with God, mm -hmm. to be honest to ourselves, it changes. Mm -hmm. when, when we were sleeping around, what was I thinking about when I was sleeping around? Mm -hmm. Oh man, Sally makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. So instead of me having a social relationship where I just hang out with Sally, mm -hmm. my physical mm -hmm. said I must consummate the socialization mm -hmm. with sex. Mm -hmm. Now I messed it up. Mm -hmm. Oh, with Jane, Jane, I just talk to Jane. Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody, that's a logical person. Mm -hmm. Now I mess that up, going back to the physical. Mm -hmm. The body only knows how to interact with itself. Mm -hmm. Right? When we, as humans, and we talk spiritual, spirit, we talk spiritual things. Mm -hmm. So we begin to uh, build each other on those things which are spiritual. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. now when you look at the physical, the physical only knows how to fulfill itself right through intimacy. Right. We're connected through sex. So that's that's it. The body says, I don't care if you're fat, skinny, tall, short, white. Give me what I need. Give me what I need. Mm -hmm. You deal with the consequences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so many people are in those cycles. Yeah. Right now. One of the things, I don't know, our last question is saying something to the younger generation about quality and quantity. But before we do that, mm -hmm. one of the things that I think is so very important to get the message out is how are you building yourself to be in relationship with others while you're going through, mm -hmm. right? How are you honoring yourself to be in that relationship? Because as we're going through and we're check marking and counting bodies and, and go instead of growing, mm -hmm. how are you going to change that process Right. So then when we go back to this question now about quantity over, I mean, quality over quantity, because now we even took off the belt and of the bodies. Mm -hmm. How do we get to being in quality relationships? So, for example, there are quite a few couples that come to me that are in their thirties, had no, no demonstration of healthy relationship. And they really don't recognize that we didn't either to a certain degree. A lot of stuff, like you said, it took you a while to learn those things. How important is it for them to understand 
quality over quantity. And I'm going to add a portion to that. Getting a mentor to help you in the process of understanding relationships. Mentorship is much like discipleship. Mm -hmm. So to have a mentor mm -hmm. and or someone who disciples you in your life, you both parties have to understand their role. Mm -hmm. That you are not there as Captain Savior. Ooh. Say that. You know what I'm saying? But and you're not there as victim mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. and you're not there as victim mm -hmm. because we sometimes we fail to realize that we're the victim ourselves say that but we portray victim mm -hmm. because it's similar to have the empathy and the sympathy of being a victim versus sometimes understanding that in the relationship we're the victim ourselves mm -hmm. so now the mentor the one who disciples has to be able to distinguish within themselves Am I talking to the person that's been victimized or am I talking to the person or am I talking to the victimizer? Mm -hmm. Now, where do I go to help grow mm -hmm. this person? The people in the 30s now, they don't have some of the things that we had growing up. Mm -hmm. Even though on television, it gave a sense of perfection, mm -hmm. but you had Family Matters, the Cosby Show, you had, uh, what was that? Um, Good times. Good times. Mm -hmm. You had those things mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that you look at so wow, this is what we go through. Mm -hmm. That's a marriage. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, I want that. Mm -hmm. Now you don't have to have drama. Reality TV. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. You know, or you gotta have this much money. Mm -hmm. So now they're what are they basing the foundation of their marriage upon? And if they are taking out God, mm -hmm. then what are they basing it on? Mm -hmm. Because you still have to What's your foundation. Mm -hmm. So when you stand in front of the people and and you and the now you have an official that's saying you know before God and before the, your friends and family you make this covenant agreement mm -hmm. to say that I'm going to legal binding agreement that I'm going to be faithful and all that we started with a snippet of God mm -hmm. and then we left them out mm -hmm. and then now we two years into the marriage and we're going I don't, I don't know this mm -hmm. I don't know how. I don't know what a marriage looks like. Because they started going. And the way I, I say it is, is you start off here, this is the wedding ceremony. Mm -hmm. And you forget to communicate. So here we go. You get to have vision and to work together and keep God in. Here we go. Mm -hmm. You're doing this. You're going down the line. But by now, here you are. And now we're disconnected. And then you have a key. Mm -hmm. You better say that. Then you have a key. So now, now you're saying, I'm staying together for the sake of the child. And then somebody tells you, you don't have to stay together for a child. So now you're hearing all, hearing all this information of people either just not fueling mm -hmm. the marriage. And one of the things that I would definitely say, if you're 30 years of age or married and you're, you're fresh married, I would do away with the people that is not going to help you about a marriage. Yeah. And that's not going to hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. The worst thing, and I say worst, is probably many other things, is to have a friend mm -hmm. that you're married. You have a friend, mm -hmm. and they're not going to tell you, "Hey, bro, you you're wrong. wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You wrong. Mm -hmm. I've had a friend. Mm -hmm. You know, even if I think it's more like social, but somebody told me that. Yeah. You no. Know, yeah. I'm calling him a brother. Mm -hmm. And it's like you are wrong. Mm -hmm. You are wrong. What? You did mm -hmm. was wrong. Right. If you don't have people in your life that's going to hold you accountable in your marriage, whether they're single or not, mm -hmm. then you don't need them because now, mm -hmm. they, now you they're nothing more than a fan squad mm -hmm. for you mm -hmm. to say, "Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. You don't have to talk to your mm -hmm. husband. Mm -hmm. Your wife tricked us." No, you don't have to. But do you mean it. you got to tell him that you go, you want to go out with the girls? You can't just go. <laughs> Both of y'all work. He, he or she can cook for themselves. Don't y'all yeah. work? Yeah. No. No. So no. You, that person, you need to get rid of that person. Because now you become codependent on that person. Well, not only that, 
if you're not willing to look at the truth in somebody's relationship before you give them permission mm -hmm. to have a conversation with you, mm -hmm. then you're setting yourself up anyway. Mm -hmm. you you got to be able to look at, see the truth, see the tree, and the fruit that it bears. If it ain't bearing the fruit of a healthy relationship, why are they getting the opportunity to speak in your life? Why are they getting the opportunity to be there, especially if they're not going to hold you accountable? Because that person enjoys it. seeing you break, seeing your stuff fall apart. So you can be as miserable as them. And not only enjoy seeing it, but they like being the important person in your life. Mm, that's so good. Because so now good. you're focused on you, they see you as that's my friend. They got my back. They always been there. They're not telling you to leave, but they're not telling you. And maybe you don't need to hang out with you today. That's so good. That's so good. So they're, they're enjoying both. When I say that's what I mean by codependent, because each one of them are feeding their mm -hmm. ego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's an ego thing. They're yeah. feeding it like, well, you know, he may be acting funny, but that's my friend. They always got my back. Mm -hmm. They always got, instead of saying, no, bro, no, sis. You know what? Maybe you just really need to go home. Right, right. You know, right. maybe you need to go home. Maybe you really need to work out why are you here? Yeah. Yeah. Man, you've been here for 30 minutes and then you all you talk about with your your little yeah. So why are you here? Go oh. home to deal with that. Hey man, did you call did you call let them know you was here? Mm -hmm. You know, but like, no, you gotta call let them know you here in pet. Well, you saying I'm oh. in pet, but you trying to live a life with being in pet. Mm. You you with old girl and you want her to be this way. You want to be that way with her, but you're telling me, why am I acting this way? Right, right, right. right. See, that goes back to that meeting. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's now with having that friend around. If you're married and you're just in your beginning, even the Bible says that the first year of a marriage, you should be at home. Don't even send them off to war because you need to establish your marriage that first year with him. Mm -hmm. And y'all and your marriage. And the only time that you that you are not supposed to come together is during the time of fasting and not for long. Right. And and not only that, one of the things statistically, yeah, no, I got you. Mm -hmm. Statistically, the first five years mm -hmm. of marriage are the most challenging simply because y'all really know each other. Yeah. You really didn't know yourself. And then when you start throwing in life nuances, mm -hmm. babies, jobs, bills, finances, friends, parents, all those type of situ situations, that first five years can be tough. You have to be willing to be committed to the process. All these people in the audience, if you're still out there living on reality show relationships, please understand this. They are scripted. They chop, cut, and slice a whole lot of videos to make it look like it's perfection. Give me that last answer before we get out of here. Okay. Um, when we asked about the younger generation of mm -hmm. quality over quantity, mm -hmm. we weren't designed to fulfill quantity. It, it just, uh, I like it. we weren't designed for it. As it goes back to saying, unfulfilled, dysfunctional, failed relationship mm -hmm. for comparison to identify the one. Mm -hmm. And we weren't designed that way. Right. And this is not, this, well, I think what I'm about to go, this is not even there. Mm -hmm. It's not even there. Mm -hmm. So we, we were designed, the Bible says that he who finds a wife, finds a good thing, and how he okay. favor with God. Mm -hmm. So the thing about it is, you have to be in your mind, before I pointed at the woman, you have to have it in your mind that you are a husband. Mm. That's so good. And the same aspect with the woman, you have to have in your mind that you are a wife. Mm -hmm. And he says, he who finds a wife. So that doesn't mean that. Not a know. woman, not a girl, not somebody to kick it with. Come on now. A wife. Mm -hmm. So that means this person already sees themselves and carries themselves mm -hmm. in a manner of a husband or wife. Mm -hmm. So now he who finds and you get favor. But a lot of times we're not looking for a wife. We're looking for right now. Oh, 
the men, women are looking for men. With, they're not looking for uh, this is maybe my baby daddy. Can he put it down? Sorry, but that's not. No, no, no. You, can, you, you know, can. can he sexually fulfill me? Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I'm. So it's both are looking for the right now, and thinking that the right now is going to fill the void of the emotions, mm -hmm. of the mental, mm -hmm. of the spiritual, mm -hmm. and thinking that this is the this is the glue that's holding everything together. Right. But it's totally wrong because now you're operating and the functions that's outside of God's will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When we operate outside of God's will, we operate under who the prince of the air. Mm -hmm. Because now we operate in ignorance. Mm -hmm. You decided to you decided to forfeit the knowledge of God and how we're supposed to come together, which would eliminate us having so many quantities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we forfeit that and operate in ignorance. Mm -hmm. And now we say we glorify the ignorance as if it's something great. Look how many bodies I got. Let me turn it around. Look how many times I committed fornication and mm -hmm. adultery, mm -hmm. and I'm proud of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now you stand before God with trouble comes. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Help me. Help me. No, but just a minute ago, I was glorifying how many bodies I got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We weren't designed mm -hmm. to fulfill the quantities. Mm -hmm. We were designed for a quality. That's that's real and that's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's real and that's wrong. When we honor ourselves with understanding that quality is the goal, not quantity, we can begin to fulfill our role in our soul. He drove this home. He who findeth a wife. Find is a good thing and obtains favor. But you got to be a posture to be looking for a wife, and you got to be a wife in posture waiting to be looked for. You've never you seen, drove that thing home. You've never seen a lighthouse look for a plane go mm -hmm. out in the ocean, mm -hmm. right? The plane always looks for the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Where's the light? Mm -hmm. That's good. Where's the light mm -hmm. where when you're in darkness when you're in darkness what are you looking for mm -hmm. light right because the light is going to guide you right to right. where you need to be mm -hmm. to a place of illumination mm -hmm. the illumination allows you to see what's before you right but when you're operating in darkness mm -hmm. you're operating in ignorance which causes you to fear so now when we in a relationship I'm fearful that you're going to hurt me again. Mm -hmm. I'm fearful that you're going to do the same thing mm -hmm. that this person did back here. Mm -hmm. I'm fearful that I might not be able to be able to fulfill you. Mm -hmm. I'm fearful that you're not going to understand me. Right. Because now we're operating in that. But we've had so many bodies that we're comparing us, them, to thinking that's going to be the right one. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to love. The ultimate thing that we're looking for is love. Mm -hmm. What's at the, what's on the other side of this life that I'm supposed to follow? Mm -hmm. Love. Mm -hmm. But love is connected to God, which goes back to the power. So if you don't go back to the power, right, which is God, you won't see love because mm -hmm. God is love, mm -hmm. which won't give you illumination of where you're at. Yes. 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 It's and 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 thing is right in here. I'm gonna skip past all of that. And it says, I'm running here. I said, it says, <laughs> who wrote it? <laughs> right? It says, uh, now, why? Because the, the, the you thought quantity was better than quality. Mm -hmm. Experience doesn't mean quality. It just means that you spread yourself thin in the hope of fulfilling a misunderstood void. Love. You misunderstood the void of love. Wow. Because we don't understand, when we don't understand what the love of God is, then now we're again mm -hmm. hoping somebody else can fulfill something mm -hmm. when we didn't go back to the source to receive the power, right. to receive the knowledge, the understanding, to make it applicable. Love is what? Love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It's, it does not boast. It's not proud. It doesn't dishonor mm -hmm. others. It's not self-seeking. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoice in truth. Mm -hmm. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. Never. 
So we have to provide what we seek. The quality of love is not the quantity of lust. Oh. The quality of love and not the quantity of lust. Yes. The misunderstood representation of a relationship. Boy, listen. You brought that thing home. When I tell you that I honestly believe lives are going to be changed and it's going to allow people to restructure their thoughts about relationships with themselves, relationships with their significant other, relationships with God. It's going to help guide them to a better understanding, asking the right questions and moving to a space of growing versus going. Thank you. You were so very much. This was you. such a powerful, powerful podcast. I cannot wait to create trailers <laughs> off of it because I know just putting those trailers out is going to really get people's attention and saying, I never thought about it like that. So let me ask you this question because I know you don't, <laughs> excuse me, necessarily have a website and all that kind of stuff. But if someone listens to this podcast and they want to say, I want him to come and speak, how could they get in contact with me? Uh, one would be Facebook. Okay. So it's basically my name. Uh, we, I can pull it out. It's Tracy. Mm -hmm. Make sure I'll give it to you the right way. Okay. And I'll send you a, a friend request and that way I have it and then I'll add it to it. No problem. So it's going to basically be uh, Tracy Ferris Thompson. Nay, an imperfect work in progress. Tracy Ferris is his name, F A R R I S. You'll see him. That face is right there, right? And go out, follow him. I'm certain I haven't followed him yet, but I will as soon as we're done here tonight. And I will be sharing some of his posts as well because I'm certain that there are some words of enlightenment out there. And that's the one. Oh, so this is Facebook as well. Ambassadors Inspired to Inspire. Facebook page, Ambassadors Inspired to Inspire. Listen, go get on his Facebook page, like, follow, comment on his post, things of this nature. The word that he has inside of him on relationship, relationship recovery, overcoming obstacles, and being real with it, the world needs to hear. I'm so grateful that you joined us for another episode of Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. You know we stream on Spotify, uh, Amazon, YouTube on Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. Like, share, and follow. You don't want to miss this upcoming season. I am telling you, just like Tracy came in here and showed out tonight. <laughs> All of the speakers are bringing such a divine message, a right now message that's going to change your life. So until the next session, we'll see you on the other side of Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. Peace and blessings.